Hello, gentlemen. Let's talk about a topic that is far more discussed in the media than it is in medical offices, squirting. It's often portrayed as the ultimate sign of female pleasure. But is it really? Some women experience it, others don't, and for some, it's a source of confusion. I'm Dr. Narita, a urologist and pelvic surgeon with 12 years of experience, and today we're going to peel back the layers of myth and assumption. We're going straight to the source, the women themselves, to understand what they actually feel when they squirt. This isn't about performance or what you see in movies. This is about intimacy, anatomy, and real connection. Stay with me because what women report might surprise you, and understanding this can fundamentally change your approach to pleasure. The biggest myth we need to bust right away is that squirting equals the best or only way a woman can experience climax. That is simply not true. The media and pornography have elevated squirting into this sexual superpower, a mandatory milestone that, if not achieved, somehow diminishes the quality of an intimate experience. This pressure is unfair to both partners. The truth, supported by women's own experiences, is that this phenomenon is entirely individual and doesn't necessarily correlate with a woman's deepest feelings of satisfaction or intimacy. It is a fascinating physiological event, but it is not the finish line for female pleasure. Understanding that fact is key to taking the performance anxiety out of the bedroom. To understand the emotional landscape, let's quickly review the biology. What exactly is squirting? It's the emission of fluid from the urethra, the tube that carries urine during sexual arousal or climax, and it happens in some women. The anatomy. Think of the female anatomy near the urethra. There are structures called skenna's glands. These glands are actually homologous to a man's prostate. This means they develop from the same tissue during embryonic development. They contain the same types of fluid. The biology. The theory is that during deep arousal, these skenna's glands fill with fluid. During a powerful climax, the pelvic floor muscles contract, putting pressure on the area, which causes that accumulated fluid to be expelled. The practical component. When we analyze this fluid, we find that it often contains prostate-specific antigen, or PSA, the same enzyme that comes from the male prostate and is found in the skenna's glands. The fluid itself is usually clear or colorless, and the amount can range from a small release to a larger gush. It's often a mix of dilute urine and fluid from the skin's glands. Now, some research also distinguishes this from female ejaculation, which is generally described as a much smaller amount of milky fluid released directly from the skin's glands. But whether we call it squirting or ejaculation, the core point is this. It's a physiological event with anatomical roots, but we rarely talk about the human experience of it. Because there is so little actual scientific research and so much media noise, a group of researchers in Sweden decided to ask women directly. They interviewed 28 women who identified as squirters to understand their real life experience. What they found were three prevailing themes, a true spectrum of human emotion. Before we dive into the countdown, if you believe in replacing sexual myths with medical facts, please hit that like button and subscribe. We're building a community of men who prioritize real health and intimacy. And let me know in the comments, what's the biggest intimacy myth you've heard lately? One, the superpower sensation, pride and amazement. The first and most dominant theme was a powerful sense of amazement, pride, and even a feeling of having a sexual superpower. The emotional impact. Many women described this as a form of sexual awakening or exploration. Some had actively tried to learn how to experience it, viewing it as a peak experience. When it happened, they felt special, empowered, and like they had unlocked a unique ability. It boosted their confidence and self-image, confirming a deep, profound connection to their own pleasure. The practical meaning. For these women, it meant a new, exciting goal in intimacy. It was something they wanted to share and explore with their partner, adding a layer of thrilling uniqueness to their love life. Two, the great disconnect. Indifference or overrated? The second theme was a feeling of indifference or a disconnection from the actual orgasmic feeling. The emotional impact. For these women, the physical event of squirting didn't necessarily amplify the pleasure. In fact, some felt it was overrated. They didn't even notice they had done it until they realized the sheets were wet. They felt the intense pleasure of the climax, but the physical release of fluid was separate. It added nothing to the emotional or neurological peak. The practical meaning. For them, the focus remained on connection, feeling, and the sensual experience. The physical manifestation was just a side effect, and their joy wasn't tied to whether or not it happened. 
This is a crucial distinction for men to understand. Don't chase the squirt, chase the connection. Three, the shame and discomfort, messy and inconvenient. The third theme was quite the opposite, and it involved feelings of discomfort, shame, or deep embarrassment. The emotional impact. These women often found the sensation messy or inconvenient. Many didn't know what was happening and genuinely feared they had accidentally peed themselves, leading to immediate embarrassment and a desire to stop or hide the experience. This feeling of shame was often amplified by their partner's reaction or by cultural taboos around sex and bodily fluids. It could seriously disrupt their focus on pleasure. The practical meaning. This created a practical barrier to intimacy. They might avoid certain positions, worry about the cleanup, or completely disconnect from their body in the moment of climax. The bottom line from the women themselves is this. There is no single reaction. It can be an amazing, powerful sensation, or it can be a source of shame, or it can be completely irrelevant. Your partner's feeling about it is completely dependent on her individual psychology, her partner's reaction, and her cultural environment. Here is your action plan for a more fulfilling, intimate life, regardless of this phenomenon. One, prioritize communication over performance. Stop chasing the visible outcome. Instead, open a supportive, judgment-free dialogue with your partner. Ask her, when you experience this, how does it feel for you? Let her guide you to her personal map of pleasure. Two, understand anatomy, but value emotion. Remember the anatomy, it's a normal, physiological event tied to the skein's glands. But practically, understand that the true measure of a great intimate experience is mutual emotional connection and sustained pleasure, not a gush of fluid. Three, create a shame-free zone. If your partner experiences this and is embarrassed, your reaction is critical. Don't make a fuss, don't pressure her, and certainly don't celebrate it like a trophy. Simple reassurance that it's perfectly normal and okay will do more for her pleasure and your connection than any performance pressure ever could. Gentlemen, what you need to take away is that squirting is completely normal, but it is not a prerequisite for intense pleasure. Some women do it, some don't, and those who do often have profoundly different feelings about it. It doesn't mean your experience is better or worse. True intimate vitality is found in connection, in communication, and in letting go of media expectations. By understanding the real experiences of women, you can approach intimacy with the confidence and sensitivity that builds a deeper, more satisfying bond. Your focus should always be on her comfort and her emotional freedom. If you found value in this message, please share it with a friend who needs to hear this. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more honest, fact-based discussions on health and wellness. Remember, knowledge is the greatest tool for intimacy. Take care of yourself and take care of your relationships. I'm Dr. Narita, and I'll see you in the next video.